Okay, guys, we are live. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Silverman, and this is one of our traditional uh, doctor series. You know, <laughs> for easy sake, I call it science presentations. This is not about as much as science because we really don't want to overwhelm you. However, um, Every one of you need to believe that you have our back in terms of medical uh, research and science. So, um, as I said, my name is Dr. Silverman and I practice medicine in uh, Alberta, Canada, and I practice uh, surgical pathology. Despite that this is my home office, you see there's a microscope here. And in fact, today I was working from home. My cat was sick, so um, I worked. I was diagnosing cancers from home. So um, uh, I'm involved with Life Vantage since 2013. And it's interesting, today my co-presenter is an amazing Dr. Praktisha Gandhi. And there's a commonality between us. And the commonality is called prevention. So despite that I am a breast cancer pathologist, um, you know, published, um, you know, a consultant and stuff, diagnosing breast cancers is not a legacy. Diagnosing cancers is a power. And um, breaking bad news, delivering bad news is not changing the world. Prevention is changing the world. And Dr. Praktisha Gandhi, I will tell you about her credentials a little bit later. But it's also an amazing story because she doesn't need to be a preventative cardiologist. She can be interventional cardiologist. And again, uh, breaking bad news. You know, your husband has a heart attack. I'm going to take him to the cath lab. And after then, you don't know what's going to happen. So the best cure of the disease is the disease prevention. And that's, you know, in Life Vantage, we don't cure Medicaid disease, but the most important thing, and that's what Dr. Gandhi is going to be talking to you about, how to address the issue of if we protect our vessels, well, inadvertently, it's going to prevent cardiovascular disease. And if we, from my teaching, if we get to the bottom line of oxidative stress or removing or cleaning cellular garbage per se, well, cancer doesn't have an option to occur. Just there is no way that cancer can occur in a genuinely healthy cell. So, and that's why it's so exciting what we do and why we do it through Life Vantage because as medical doctors, we spread the word of health through Life Vantage. But please, again, don't get me wrong. We are business builders because I cannot talk to a thousand people, but I can teach my business partners and then they can distribute the word of health and the same is going to happen with dr Praktisha gandhi's team we spread the world of health by numbers by multiplying that's how we convey the message dr gandhi an incredible honor to co-present today with a global healthcare leader an md a multiple MD, I believe she's practicing in the United States and India. She is a serial entrepreneur, I like the word serial entrepreneur. Preventative cardiologist, she is an author of books, a speaker, researcher, and she is India's first woman preventative cardiologist, recognized none other by uh, the a president of India. You see who we have today? Now, uh, she pioneers, obviously, in the concept of preventative and non-invasive cardiology, and she, um, um, she discovered and she is running the Preventative Non-Invasive Institute of uh, Cardiology, which initially she established, a co and she's a founder of this institute, and she established it. I guess people in Arizona don't understand that I am on the presentation. Sorry about that. 
um, but now she runs two, uh, basically two arms of uh, this institute, uh, one in India and one in the United States of America. So as we know, the uh, death rate number one belongs to cardiovascular diseases. So it's our duty to prevent cardiovascular diseases. So let me start with sharing my screen and then Dr. Gandhi is going to share hers. Uh, sorry guys, we were practicing, even doctors practice. So, oh, and somebody's uh, texting me on the wrong number. I uh, actually call him. Why, you know guys, what separates life vantage? And why are we talking prevention? Because we're talking nutrigenomics. Uh, think of the word nutrigenomics. We can break it into two parts. It's nutrition into genes. Now, it's up to you and it's up to me. What kind of nutrition I'm applying to my genes? Mind you, our genome is about 20,000 genes. Lately, I've heard 23,000 genes. And guess what? Only 1.5 to 2% are coded, meaning that nothing we can do about it. Can you imagine that um, over 90% of my genes are actually modifiable? So I can play with them. And I can play with them two ways. I can play with them in a good way and I can play with them in a bad way. So nutrigenomics, so let's modify our genes in a good way. Why is it so important to modify our genes? Because those genes, they make signals to make proteins or enzymes. And that is those biochemical structures that run our cells. And again, some of these enzymes, they affect our cells in an adverse way, and that's what we want to prevent. And some of these enzymes, they absolutely act on our cells in a positive, constructive uh, uh, way to keep us not only healthy, but to keep us young um, and functional. Why are we so excited about free radicals? I just came back from the conference, Environmental Health uh, for Healthcare Practitioners. And there was a notion. Every toxin is a free radical and every free radical is a toxin. What is a free radical? So you obviously understand the concept of toxins. We know that. Let's say I'm a pathologist. I work with toxins. I work with formalin. So obviously I need to take life advantage products to uh, eliminate that stuff. So a free radical. Free radical is a toxin, a molecule, a structure, or something that uh, misses its own particle or misses an electron and wants it back and wants it back in a hurry and wants it back from anything that it's on its way. And when that free radical gets back this electron, it harms or damages the cells. So in order, so that's what we're talking about. We're trying to get uh, our hands on prevention of that free radical, constant, relentless free radical barrage, which is called oxidative stress. And as you see on this slide, for us doctors, we deal with disease. We don't deal with normality. And disease, it's dis-ease. And something is missing. It's either too much of a negative stimuli or noxious stimuli or toxins, or too little of eliminating them or not enough prevention. So that is that disbalance. It's like disbalance, we need balance in everything. Oxidative stress-free radical damage. As I mentioned, why it is so exciting to have Dr. Gandhi, because she's going to talk to us about one system. On this slide, you see that basically every major organs, every major functional system are linked to, uh, in, a, in adverse manner, are linked to oxidative stress or free radical damage. And from every organ or every system, you can build those chronic diseases. It's all about chron chronicity and eliminating that chronicity because the direct link is free radical damage equals oxidative stress. Oxidative stress leads to chronic inflammation. 
Chronic inflammation is a culprit of our medical society, of our medical community. And every chronic inflammation, you can, you can, you know, you can divide into every organ, uh, basically attach the uh, suffix uh, itis, and you get your carditis, dodenitis, mastitis, and it, it, it leads to chronic inflammation. And it's interesting when we start dealing with chronic inflammation, when we, you know, how many people you know that that one has rheumatoid arthritis? Not enough. When there's chronicity, there is a chronicity to different organs. So if someone has a diabetes, so that person probably has a liver dysfunction. From a liver dysfunction, that person probably has uh, a weight problem and a high blood pressure problem. A person with rheumatoid arthritis probably has a problem with maybe bowel, like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis. You, so it never comes as just one problem. It comes in a multitude of chronic problems, which are all related to this guy, oxidative stress. Oh yeah, we hit 100 people. So now, let's get, please do not write on my slides. So let's get to the root cause and the bottom of it. Yes, guys, we have a winner. Whether you like it or not, we do have a winner. NRF2 Pratandum is one of those winners, but we have it. So we're talking about NRF2 activation. And um, uh, my husband just joined me. He just decided to join me. Uh, this is in a live presentation. So NRF2 Pratandum. The simple combination of five herbs or extracts of these herbs, and some of them are so familiar to Dr. Gandhi because turmeric extract, turmeric, so indigenously known in India, bacopa extract, known in Canada as rosehip, but in India as brahmi, so known for centuries as the healing remedy, ashwagandha root, something that uh, uh, used for depression, uh, sexual dysfunction, cardiovascular disease, um, uh, immune system, adrenal boost, again, used in India for centuries, and milk thistle, which is used everywhere and everybody knows it as the weed. So the combination, the synergistically concocted combination of these herbs uh, created this product, which is called NRF2 per tandem. It's built on synergy patterns. What is NRF2? Well, NRF2, guys, is a key to cellular health. So if NRF2 is a key to cellular health, right? So this is how we unlock that key with NRF2 per tandem. So why am I so excited about NRF2? Because, again, it's a key. So what does it do? Do you think that this NRF2 opens one door? Oh, no, 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 no. That, um, that uh, it's called nuclear transcription factor. Think about it. Nuclear means it goes into the nucleus. Transcription means that it actually transcribes the genes. So it gives that NRF2 holds the key to the transcription what is called survivor genes. You know, lately it was said over 900 survivor genes are described. And if they're survivor genes, obviously these are good things. So the category of these survivor genes include anti-inflammatory, we were just discussing chronic inflammation, anti-cancer, and the genes that turn on our own antioxidants. And those antioxidants are going to repel the free radicals. Don't get me wrong. You need to eat right. You need to eat your nutrient-dense foods, your green foods, your fruits and vegetables, your amazing um, essential fatty acid, on and on and on. However, it's not enough. You need your cellular, your own antioxidation, and NRF2 is the key. So, as I said, it's a master restart, and I'm so excited. Again, you know, I just came back from the second in the world NRF2 conference uh, targeting chronic diseases. That's where we are. The title of the conference is NRF2 targeting chronic diseases. 
We were talking atherosclerosis, multiple sclerosis. Uh, we were talking NRF2 and cancer, um, uh, fibromyalgia, and different other things. Diabetes, liver disease. So, I, you know, I'm going to uh, uh, mention only one antioxidant here, which is critically important. When I mentioned to you that NRF2 unlocks the genes that turn on our own antioxidant, one of them is called a master antioxidant. It is called glutathione. The importance of glutathione health or the glutathione volume concentration is critical because the decrease in glutathione is directly linked to heart attacks cerebrovascular accidents or lack of it, not glutathione more, but the lack of it. Uh, glutathione and brain health go, you know, absolutely uh, side by side. Not enough glutathione, the brain is not going to be functioning right. Um, and so having NRF2 pretend I'm knowing that it upregulates glutathione gene via NRF2 activation, increasing that glutathione production by three to four fold. That is absolutely amazing. So now, uh, now it's my time to stop share and leave all the floor to incredible Dr. Gandhi, please. Oh, unmute yourself, unmute. Okay. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very, very excited. Uh, all great energy out here. Uh, and thanks to Dr. Silverman. She has been, she has done all actually the difficult part for me and made it so easy talking about NRF2 and oxidative stress and the science. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to talk anything in some uh, cardiology jargons. What we're going to share here today is because what I understand is there are uh, like uh, this is like for all the people in the world uh, and a lot of uh, people who are non-medical are over here. So and uh, that is what I'm excited in Life Vantage, you know, that anyone who is interested in health and wellness is over here. And uh, I'm so happy to uh, share my message today. So since uh, I'm new and I have great and amazing team, I'm going to like a little bit uh, put up on uh, what I've been doing as a preventative cardiologist and uh, what excited me about of this uh, about this NRF2 technology and uh, what is my vision related to this, where we'll be going in future and why I've chosen to be a part of Live Vintage. And uh, I just want to make a disclaimer that uh, these are my personal views about the product. We all know that Protendim is not supposed to prevent, treat, or cure diseases, uh, which is uh, which is over there here. But uh, whatever I'm sharing is my experience and my knowledge. Um, and with because I've worked with these ingredients uh, over 20 years, you know, because uh, uh, having active practices in India, I have used a lot of this in my practice and how I find Protendim as a different product. So I'm going to share my views and science and this is independent of uh, life vantage are my personal views so i'm just uh, before i start sharing uh, i just wanted to have a disclaimer okay so here we go uh, have fun because uh, uh, i i don't think so cardiology is uh, that's uh, that much uh, we get all scared with heart attacks and uh, we all think heart means we're going to die but that's not true because uh, what I found IPC heart care is the our own mission actually is like, you know, to save people from heart attack and open heart surgeries. And uh, because of my global initiative, uh, like I came to US uh, uh, and have been working here since last four years. So uh, today, uh, like what Dr. Silverman told me is to share about uh, oxidative stress, uh, cardiovascular diseases and how NRF2 activation will help in prevention or the people who have got heart diseases. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead. Uh, like, uh, one sec, I'll just go to the next. Uh, little bit stuff. Yeah, I got it. So let me make it very simple because uh, I want this to be an education for the layman 
because we all talk about heart disease heart disease could be like lots it could be like uh, uh, valvular problems like uh, something like cardiac fibrosis myopathies but the main chunk of heart disease is actually coronary artery disease almost 80% of them what you hear about people dying or a sudden chest pain and all so what actually happens in this heart disease and i feel it is very very vital for each one of you to know this because like uh, if you look at the uh, statistics out here like uh, almost 70% of the people are getting heart attack as a first symptom and uh, like you know half of them don't even survive you know so i think the people who are waiting to get symptoms and then act upon are actually you know manufacturing the disease and that's where i see a uh, role of uh, protendem and prevention because i feel that i'm going to share about it that how it is going to be later on but uh, i would like to make this problem statement because this is something which is very serious that you know like i know dr silverman is uh, great in cancer and you know she wants to eradicate cancer and she doesn't want to give the bad news so same way i chose to be in preventive and i have been like almost like uh, like uh, so many years or more than 20 years i always been delivering the good news <laughs> luckily i chose this at the beginning of my career because what i realized that it is the number one disease in the whole world almost 40% of the deaths twice the mortality uh, due to all types of cancer so it is actually larger than cancer and uh though us has got the best uh, medical system in the whole world which we are proud of still 735000 people are developing uh heart attacks out of which 525000 are the fresh ones you know so i feel that we and our all teams and all the people here at life vintage have a big role to play because there are so many people out there who are needing our help and i'm going to share to you that how we can help them okay so uh stay uh, stay on okay so what i'm going through is just a little bit what you must have done maybe in your high school days in biology uh, a basic uh, like heart uh, we know that all like the aorta is the main pipe which supplies blood to the whole body and heart has its own unique blood supply which is the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery uh, one comes in the front which is a lad which is also referred to as widow maker arteries uh, by the cardiologists because if you get a heart attack over here the chances of dying are very high and one which goes behind which is lcx now why i'm sharing this is that when we talk of blockages like what do we mean like you know we say that the the heart has got blocked the arteries have got blocked and what oxidative stress has role to play you know and we need to understand this so that whenever we are talking to people about uh, heart disease prevention at least you know uh, anybody who is interested now uh, we i'm also going to uh, talk about our target audience uh, whom we can reach and how we can reach uh, so uh, just first understand the basics that uh, when we are getting a heart attack which is a complete closure of the artery it's like a warning thing right like 911 hospitalization and all the surgeries but just look at here like when does the disease start the disease starts from the teenagers you know they did a research like in the teenagers and they found the fatty streaks in them you know and in fact they did studies in uk and they found out that in the infants also like how the cholesterol so when we do actually a screening and we find cholesterol and uh, all those things at a adult stage it is not that at that point it starts at a very young age you know and the blockage keeps on developing and unfortunately when the blockage has developed more than 70 80% that is where the symptom starts so what excites me is that we have a huge window of prevention we have got lot of young people out there and you know like people out there who are manufacturing the disease and it's not that we have to wait for to someone to become a senior and talk about heart health i always say that prevention is from womb to tomb and i'm going to explain you how so what i have been working on all my life is how the blockages progress and how to reverse them you know and uh, i have done lot of research and work related to it i'm not going to it but that is my passion and that my passion to learn about this has led me to uh, this product uh, of protendem now if you look over here this is how the cross section looks 
maybe we can find our burgers over here or steak or a lot of stuff you know we keep on eating yes and we don't know what's happening right all those like fatty food and cook and like you know we're just enjoying ourselves and this is what happens inside us you know and we just don't know it just keeps on developing but i tell you that people people get scared of heart but i say that heart is the best organ heart keeps on tolerating tolerating you know all the things which we do wrong to ourselves we eat wrong food we don't exercise we shout we are impatient we are intolerant you know and this little guy which is hardly like uh, you know the size of a feast or 200 or uh, 250 or 200 grams like you know it it it, it just takes on all the brand you know and what we are seeing over here that a stage comes when suddenly there is a rupture of that block and boom we know that we have got an attack you know and i'm going to later on show that what dr shweta said that how our uh, nrf2 activation is going to prevent all these things so i'm going to show you a little bit on that but i want you to get this common man story this is what people uh people uh, just know that okay heart attack and this but i just wanted to understand that how this develops you know so basically the reason why i am here and i'm so excited that all of you are here i think we have to attack the heart attack before it attacks you you know <laughs> you know so prevention is always better than cure you know and that is what we are here for you know and as dr silverman said we yes we all have tools you know we know about the low fat uh, like vegetarian diet and you know like uh, managing stress and maybe we can do yoga meditation or exercise but i feel that uh, what we have protendum is a is a great tool which uh, helps you know in addition to all these things because i'm going to share that i have worked with this for last 20 years and uh, Uh, when we have a tool like this we can give, give such amazing results the way this science is all about so if you go next now generally uh, i'll tell you that as a preventive person i know all of you uh, must have gone through this right when we we see something like this we get so excited we go all out we tell our friends we go and talk to doctors and we talk to everybody and they are not excited like us <laughs> <laughs> and you feel so bad and you feel that you know like there are rejection but i tell you that just don't worry it is all about them you know it's not about us because the problem about prevention is that that very few people understand prevention so i will just take you a little bit through the stages of prevention you know because one is we talk about the primary prevention which is in young children and young infants that is where i feel that everything should begin you know like uh we should be uh like uh doing this products with our children like i have got my young girls i started with them to like why them should we wait till they get old you know and especially thanks to kerry williams you know she motivated me a lot uh because i was thinking it is after 18 this we can use it but she just uh, has been using on you you can for kids so uh, and i i i heard that amazing story so i feel that uh we can really help young children and young adults then we have got the secondary prevention and i think this is a group which will be little receptive because i always say that what kerry dickey says that you know you feel you feel the person and what pain that person has or what that person needs so when we are talking to people a uh, high risk group which is people who may be having high cholesterol blood pressure diabetes uh, people who are overweight uh people who are smoking you know all these people are likely to have you know like more chances of getting a cardiovascular event and i think the most receptive group is going to be the people with a, a heart history in the family because they are i have always seen in my practice you know that many times when i have young people coming in i ask them you are 25 you are 30 why are you coming in now because i am used to seeing old people so they say that you know like my my father had a heart problem and you know i lost him at the age of 42 and uh, you know like uh, i i just don't want to be there you know so please help me so i think uh, what happens is that many times uh, yes we want to reach out to the most of the people but the people who are going to be more receptive to our message would be this kind of group because you know they already are vulnerable and there is a possibility of an event happening and obviously 
the group which is going to be most receptive is already people who have got problem because they have this nagging pains and aches and they are the ones uh, uh, like if they are, the system uh, has not given them results they are going to listen to anything what you say you know so that's what i say that prevention is from home to tomb everybody could be uh, uh, like you know we should share our message to everybody we should not leave anyone because it will be beneficial so what we are facing right now as you see over here uh i think we all like the movie titanic and you know we all know about the iceberg but what what we are seeing here is like you know what we are seeing that 750000 people getting as a heart attack is just the tip of the iceberg what is sitting below is this huge population over there and i think we have a responsibility towards the society where we have to shout and keep on spreading our message don't bother who listens or who doesn't but just be consistent you know and that is what i have been doing all my life you know i am just consistent in what i am doing i really uh, i mean i must have i have lost the count of the lectures and the seminars and the kind of shows i have done and help people but what i see is that we should not stop doing good because this is what we need to uh, track and uh, we have a powerful product now to help us help this population okay so that is what is exciting coming to the group uh, the baby boomers the seniors most of them have this uh, like you know like incidence is almost one in four you know so i mean every third person you will be talking about 60 65 would be having this you know so uh, this is something which you need to keep some tips with you that most of them would have undergone a process which is like a angioplasty or a stenting now if you look over here uh, a common man thinks that okay i went i cleared my garbage which was a blockage i don't need to take or do all these things because i have gone i have cleared my garbage and i was stent and i'm fine you know that's what people think and or many times they undergo the open heart surgery where they are stitching the grafts but if you look at this the the root of the blockage is over here so what happens over a period of time like i have treated cases where this gentleman had done three angioplasties and you know like he was told the fourth fourth one in the same area the stent was keeping on getting reblocked and i am going to show you that how how uh you know like uh, uh what we are doing can help uh, this kind of people you know which because i'm going to discuss the ohio state study you know so if you look at this or if you look at even the surgery the grafts which are put in you know again there is a reblockage over there so what we need to educate the people is that okay great you have done surgery you are on medication that's fine but that does not remove the root cause of the problem what i am happy is that we have got something which treats and goes to the root that is what is exciting me you know and that is what uh, we have a great story to tell you know because these are the methods which can just like kind of we say like elevate the problems but it doesn't help to go to the root and there is there are chances of recurrence now i my journey started because i was in a country where i was actually having a great life being a hospital owner because once you are a hospital owner everything rolls in you have insurance all the patients come in you have got everything what you want on the earth but what was upsetting me was like you know people coming in the icu constant stress burnout and there is where i thought that what can i do to help people stay away from hospitals i know it is it is great financially and it is great you know to have a hospital but can i do something to keep people away from hospital you know and that's where my journey as a preventive cardiologist started where i started teaching yoga and meditation and i i came upon eecp which i learned from uh, stony brook new york which is amazing non invasive technology to open up the collaterals with the heart so i did more than 50000 cases with more than 95% success rate uh, and they feel better but now i feel more excited that uh, we open up the collaterals they do diet and exercise but we have got something which is powerful which will help them to go to the root cause which is always i find uh, find uh, finding so let's now get to nrf2 activation you know this is what i wanted to share about the standard cardiology what procedures are happening and what issues which we are facing but now this is something uh, which has excited me to be a part of this amazing team that it has got 
very good studies you know one of the biggest problem which we are facing currently in practice is you know heart failure it's 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 really bad even in us also if you look at medicare in fact they have given notices that you have to manage heart failure well because if the patient gets readmitted again within 30 days you know there's going to be a penalty on the hospital you know so uh, so there is a study by american uh, heart association uh, which was published in uh, circulation you know which was done by virginia commonwealth university and it talks about uh, right side heart failure and it talks about how uh, protendim is been beneficial so you know like yes again we are always like we are not here to uh, like say prevent treat or cure diseases but what we are looking at the studies is that where protendim is having a lot of scope you know and to be honest i am so excited to be a part of this team because i am going to do a lot of studies in india i want to do studies in human beings i want to i am going to and luckily in india we have got uh, uh complementary therapies are accepted and we can do case control double blind randomized studies we are allowed to do that and the main reason why i'm part of this amazing team is that i really want to do justice to this amazing product what we have you know and and i i am i am so much excited about it because because we are facing huge problems and the problems which we are facing of heart failure repeat uh, uh, like repeat surgeries and there is some some term which is known as uh, what we call refractory angina no what is refractory angina refractory angina is a group of people where they have done bypass they have done angioplasty they are taking medications full dose they are not getting help you know so i mean we have so much pool of people out there who need help you know and we have got amazing product and we need to work more on it and reach out to people who could be helped by this you know so uh, another state of uh, another study which i am very much interested and which really uh, took away my all attention was the ohio state study because uh, my common problem in practice which i always face is that you know people have done surgeries and especially you will find this more in the baby boomers because uh, previously when the surgeries used to happen they used to pick up the veins of the legs which is the graft saphenous vein and if you look at the ohio state they had, they have done it on the saphenous vein grafts you know and they found out that uh, the the grafts which were treated with protendim uh, then you know they are able to like you know not uh, reblock again you know and uh, even angioplasty is also if we apply the same principle what happens is that actually technically the root cause of the entire uh, blockage is endothelial dysfunction now we all understand exothelium the skin what we have here is the outer part and endothelium if you just want to get a feel of it is something which if you open your lips and touch inside that is the endothelium it's a very smooth lining okay so same way our arteries the internal lining is known as endothelium and the dysfunction of that endothelium causes everything so when even surgeries are done that endothelium because of the disturbance is going to keep on producing the problem again and again and this ohio state study is so very relevant actually to cardiology because it gives us a great uh, scientific evidence that how how this product is helping you know uh, to uh like you know if you want to uh, prevent the reblockages or you know like getting the disease again it becomes so useful you know so i hope that uh, you must have all uh, got that message very clear and now if you want to go more little technical uh, uh i'm sure that you know you must be facing people with getting cholesterol and high cholesterol and i think everyone in us knows the, about the bad cholesterol that is the ldl and the good cholesterol which is the hdl and because all of us go through our meds so uh the culprit in the blockage is what we call oxidized ldl now how does this oxidized ldl happen you know it is all because of oxidative stress you know if you look at the root cause is oxidative stress and now you understand the relevance of what we are doing that the process from where the whole blockage formation the plaque formation what we call st starts is through oxidative stress because and especially uh, they have found out that small oxidized uh, ldl particles are mainly responsible 
Now this bad cholesterol that is this oxidized LDL, it goes and injures an endothelium and it starts this cascade of a lot of response in your cells, which starts leading to blockages. I'll not go into it, but just uh, maybe if you like this, you can take a, a picture of this, you know. And anyways, uh, Dr. Silverman is doing the recording, so we'll get it. Uh, so, uh, again, coming to prevention of heart attack, that why, why, why do... I, I'm into this uh, because what you see, you look at again the plaque destabilization and blood clotting, which is the root cause of the heart attack. Again, if you look at the root cause is oxidative stress, you know, because there is a lot of free radical activity going and a lot of inflammation happening. So when all these things are happening, it goes and makes the plaque unstable, you know. And, you know, like, and that's why, like, uh, one of the thing is that if your blockage is stable and it has got calcification and a good cover, we say that the chances of heart attack are less. So what what uh, now I think uh, I'm very cl uh, clear by now that why I'm excited to be a part of this uh, great venture which we all are doing. And uh, I would just like to uh, say that uh, uh, like I think in the Bible in 6.14, it was about the Noah's Ark that make the Ark you know, like to save the people. So I always like that. I feel that uh, we are making a, we are making a, uh, uh, that boat, that arc uh, uh, for helping people to prevent diseases or not get diseases, you know, like the way he wanted to help people to avoid getting flooded, you know. So I, I, I somehow uh, feel that, we, you know, like God has sent us to build this some arc and we have to reach out to people. I know that people are going to laugh. Some of them are going to sit and tell that, what are you doing? You're stupid. And what is NRF2 and all that? But I really don't care because I have been speaking to a lot of my cardiologist friends. Most of them don't know. And most of them are even laughing. But I don't care because 20 years before also they were laughing when I started preventive. And But then they are all copying me at the end of the day because you know what happens is that people first ridicule you they laugh at you uh, then if you pers persist then somewhere what happens they start looking at you and finally a stage comes when they want to copy you you know so <laughs> so with what all i've done in life i have gone through all that stages you know of uh, right from resistance to uh, full blown recognition and i'm sure that though uh, nrf2 is something new which people don't know but I'm sure that if we as a team, I'm very thankful to Dr. Silverman uh, because, uh, you know, she gave me this opportunity today. It is my honor and pleasure to be with here and uh, the amazing team of people which we have here to share. Uh, but what I feel is that uh, we are doing very great work and all of you keep your spirits high. Don't ever uh, feel down. Whenever you feel down, just close your eyes, take a deep breath. And just remember that we are building a wonderful ark to save people, you know, we are, because God is, God, you know, okay, people go to church, people go to temples and all, I meditate, I feel that God is something which is within us, you know, you can always, if you meditate and if you go to your higher self, you can always get intuitive, you know, you'll get a lot of messages and that's what I have been experiencing for so many years. So what I always, whenever I think of, uh, uh, I, whenever I think of uh, Protandem, Life Vantage, whenever I think of the people I'm associated with, I've always got good vibes and good messages, you know, uh, from the higher self, you know. And I feel so, so blessed and so fortunate that John Brooks, uh, you know, got me in and Dr. Mark Gordon and the way uh, Kerry Williams, Kerry Dickey, uh, Stu, everybody, you know, like worked around with me. Uh, and Hithal. So we, we feel very great. So what I want to end is with a note that uh, uh, like I have, if you want to take a picture on my slides, I'm there. Uh, you can always, we are there with you. We are all one team with a, with a major goal, you know, of uh, reaching out to people. So uh, if any medically, if you have any issues, you can always reach out and, you know, like uh, if you need any help to spread the message. Uh, I think as what Dr. Silverman says that our commitment always remains. So I thank you very much, all of you, for a very patient uh, hearing. And now it's to Dr. Silverman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gandhi. I hope guys 
you will agree with me and support me in a notion how amazing this presentation was, how much knowledge you've gained, how much belief you've gained. And I'm not going to talk about the other products. I will just tell you one thing. In regards to cardiovascular health, the notion of us having a vitality stack, meaning that NRF2 per tandem, NRF1 per tandem, which is a mitochondrial boost, and mitochondrial boost is so critically important for cardiac health, for that cardiac muscle health. Then probiotic, which is critically important because surprisingly enough, unhealthy gut leads to cardiovascular disease and heart failure and mu a heart muscle failure. And then essential fatty acids. Omegas are so critically important for heart health. So that combo, we're not going to talk about it today because we don't have enough time, but the concept of Life Vantage brings for cardiovascular health is so, so critically important. So on this note, again, thank you so much for Dr. Gandhi. So maybe next time we actually can go into stage, stage two or step two, uh, series uh, part two of our okay. series, which is going to be mitochondrial health and cardiovascular disease. Okay. So now, guys, let me see. I think we have questions. Or if not, I think everybody is extremely grateful and thanking uh, Dr. Gandhi for an amazing presentation. So guys, if there are no questions, I'm going to wait for maybe one minute or maybe a few seconds. If there are no questions, I'm going to say thank you so much. Have a great evening. And hopefully, oh, this is a long question. Um, maybe not. Uh, and um, um, hopefully we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi. I'm looking forward to series part two. Okay. <laughs>